Hey Rat Bags, it's Jade. I am here today with my seven crucial things you need to know about playing Grounded. You might have already started, you might be surviving, but I'm hoping these little tips will give you a little bit more heads up. Grounded does a pretty good job with its tutorial and explaining certain things, but there are a few other little bits that I feel like players would benefit from knowing a little bit earlier. There will be some very light spoilers about crafting in this video, about where you can get access to certain crafting pieces, so bear that in mind if you really don't want any kind of help that way. What this video isn't is me showing you 20 locations of weapons and stuff. That kind of stuff is better for other videos or for you just finding out. But these are about systems and stuff that I think the game maybe could do just a bit more explaining. Seven things Grounded doesn't really tell you. So first off and probably most important is upgrades. When you come across the upgrade rocks that you'll encounter, most likely in the termite little nest as you're trying to investigate the wire being chewed, you'll find sturdy quartzite and sturdy marble. You can't harvest it unless you've got a tier 2 hammer, so you're probably going to come back here later on. So this stuff doesn't respawn. Once you've gone and got every single bit from the map, that is it. You won't be able to get any more. So how do you get so many upgrades for your armors and weapons? Well, eventually you'll get recipes that you'll be able to craft some of it. But these aren't exactly that clear. And especially when you go and buy the smithing station from talking to Burgle, it seems like you can just make as much brittle whetstone and brittle plank as you want. But of course it only uses the rocks that you found. It's not until you've cleared maybe the fourth major dungeon in terms of progression, the Black Ant Hill, that you'll get access to craft unlimited amounts of the brittle plating and the brittle whetstone. That's because you can go ahead and craft it using bug parts which do respawn and of course sap. So if you're having trouble upgrading, don't panic. You will be able to find more rocks all around the yard and even if you feel like you've got most of them, eventually you will be able to craft them out of bug parts. When you get the Black Ant chip, it does give you the ability to upgrade the advanced smithing, so that pretty much means you can upgrade all of your weapons up the mighty path. And if you want to upgrade your weapons with elemental damage like fresh, spicy and sour or salty, you need to go to the laboratory in the sandbox, and that means absolutely using the assistant manager key you get from defeating the Black Ant Hill. This is where you get the advanced smithing flavor the globs. To craft all of these, you are going to need a ton of that sturdy whetstone. But it's the same story, you can only use the rocks that you found, the tier 2 sturdy rocks and tier 2 marble to go ahead and make the sturdy plate in a whetstone. If you want to actually craft unlimited amounts using bug parts, you've got to go and complete one of the toughest dungeons in the game because of the area location. All the way in the northeast of the map, the stump lab requires the assistant manager key cards to activate another switch under the oak tree in a small pond outpost to open up this door. Once you get this chip, you'll be able to make the sturdy whetstone and plate in out of ladybird parts and spider fangs, but that is like really towards the end of the game. So if you really feel like you've gone and got as much of the sturdy rocks as you can and you've run out simply using them to upgrade stuff, this is the only way that you'll be able to carry on fully maxing out some of your gear. The sturdy stuff allows you to upgrade up to level 6 and 7 and again it does the same thing. It will give you the ability to go ahead and craft the next tier up to level 8 and 9 depending if you found a lot of the supreme marble and quartzite but it won't let you actually make it out of bug parts yourself until you've gone and defeated the boss inside Moldock Castle. Now don't get me wrong, there's plenty of rocks around the map now, with the upper yard locations being added, you should find a bunch, and obviously when you crack open a tier 2 or tier 3 rock, you often get the tier below, not just the tier 2 or tier 3 rocks only. But this is a relatively new thing they've done, previously you just got the recipes at certain locations and much earlier in the game. I'm hoping they might change this in the future, making this guide almost pointless, but there you go, that's a big one about what it doesn't tell you. Might sound like I'm complaining there, maybe a little bit. Grounded of course like good survival games are all about exploration and finding stuff for yourself without as much of the handhold that you get in normal RPGs. Grounded obviously has a lot of help with tutorials and signposting, guiding you through the initial stages, but it's that crucial bit it kind of misses out that I think will stop a lot of players realising they can actually upgrade their stuff to max potential. So now we've got the big one out of the way, let's go through some smaller stuff that you might not know. Mutations are gained by just playing the game. Kill a certain creature, kill creatures with axes, spears or hammers and you'll pop up with the notification. Obviously this isn't such a bad one, it's part of the game design for you to discover yourself what kind of mutations you can get, but for players maybe not looking for that kind of mystery, there's a bunch of mutations that you get from killing bosses later in the game. 
some mutations that you have to eat, lots of mints to help get that mutation, as well as others requiring you to run out of stamina consistently. Some mutations you'll be able to buy, which it does tell you about, but other mutations you can only get in certain places. So either look up a wiki or check out some of my guides that I've already done on mutations, including new ones to realise your potential about what could be helping you. You won't also realise you can increase the amount of mutations you have active up to a maximum of 5, but you can only do that once you've broken one of the milk molars. So you're going to need a tier 2 hammer to break open one and then return to Burgle and go to an ASL machine. This is really one of the most important features I feel like you should max out where possible, get as many active mutations going and that'll help you a lot. And while we're here looking at milk molars, just a heads up, you can't respec at the moment, it might be something that introduced in the future, so be careful about how and where you spend. Occasionally during early access, when they had a big update, they did refund all of our milk molars to redo as more were added, but it does look like that is the case now. Once you've spent them, you can't change your mind. So think carefully about what you want to increase with the milk molars and look high and low for every single one to max out your character. A really cool feature of Grounded is the ability to scan resources, so you never have to look up a wiki or a video again. What it doesn't tell you is though, you need to activate this in the hedge, and it can be easy to miss. You could go past that door, and in the past it wasn't always highlighted that this was where you should go. They did move this location as well, it used to be part of the main hedge laboratory, but I'm guessing the devs want you to be able to unlock the resources scanner a little bit earlier. So once you've gone through, you should be able to pull the switch, and this means you'll never have to worry about search for resources again. You will have to go and find all the science outposts so that you've got a full picture of the map, but this will activate you at least so then blacked out machines will now work in every pod. So as long as you've come across that resource, whether it be water droplets, grass, maybe pieces from creatures like ladybug, heads, you will now be able to scan and find it every time you're at one of these. That's why the head should be one of the first dungeons that you really complete maybe after the first red anthill or at least go here first and activate that before going and exploring the rest of the hedge and the hedge laboratories. Want to fight the two summonable bosses in Grounded? You can have as many fights as you want in fact with the Broodmother and the Mantis, but you need to find the recipe to summon them. The Broodmother's not too bad, it's at the very end of them hedge laboratories in the Overseer pod. But again with the Mantis you need to get the Assistant Magic Key card so you can't take on the Mantis boss until you've got that and then opened up the switch gone to the stump laboratory and found the recipe in the stump lab. That might seem a bit spoilerific, but they are kind of optional bosses, you don't actually have to take care of them to complete the game. But for sure, the amount of comments I've had from players asking where stuff is, I feel like it's worth pointing out. When it comes to choosing where to build your base, that's also a really important feature. Where you choose could impact what kind of rage you get from bugs. Now this has been toned down quite a bit for 1.0, but the more bugs you kill, the more time you spend in a particular biome, the more chance you've got of triggering a raid by the bugs. It's an exhilarating thing the first time it happens, but you may get a bit sick of mosquitoes attacking you, all because you've built a base near the pond. So it's really a good idea to run around the map and really check, save in certain points and see where the save file says. It normally will tell you if you're saving either in the grasslands, the pond area, of course, the biggest factor is the amount of creatures that you kill. So if you don't want to be attacked by a bunch of mosquitoes, try not to kill a bunch of them. Likewise, getting attacked by a party of ants or maybe even the all weavers, that could all potentially happen if you go harvesting and killing a bunch of them. Don't want to over panic you, it won't happen for a while and the first one you get will probably be something you can handle. But you will get the pop-ups that will tell you like the larvae are annoyed by you. And when you see larvae want you gone, that's when you know you've got to get back to one of your bases, your main one, and protect it. They can actually attack any of your outposts around the map, it just depends on where you've triggered that special attack. So if you're in somewhere where you've got a base close to larvae and you've gone and killed a bunch of them, they're more than likely going to go and attack that base. For some reason, if you've triggered an all weaver fight and you're not at your base, you're at an outpost and it's close to your weavers, then technically they should head to that as well. But for most players, you might not experience that until like day 20, day 25. And again, the game doesn't really say, but as you get progressively into it, they will get a bit more harder. And as you keep going through areas and you kill more bugs, then the waves may have a chance of getting much more difficult. But that really won't be until much later, like after day 50, day 60, unless you're an absolute beast killing every bug that you ever see. 
It's all part of understanding how grounded works, but yeah, just a little heads up and FYI. Don't panic too much, but be mindful about where you choose to have your base. If an area's got predominantly a bunch of mosquitoes, then chances are you'll get more regular attacks from them as you'll have to deal with them more as you go in and out of your base. And lastly, the game does tell you you can get pets pretty much when you peep them and also go ahead and scan some of their resources. It should give you the option to maybe craft some of the armor pieces you can put on them. But it doesn't really explain how vital they are at the moment because of the inventory issue that Grounded kind of has. Getting a pet at the moment is vital because it gives you an option to have even more inventory space. They are weak to attack from other creatures and that's what the armor does when you get a pet and it does take a bit of time to get them. There's three at the moment with the Weevil, the Aphid and the Gnat and they all have little perks themselves so it's definitely worth getting a pet as soon as possible. You can get little pet houses from later on once you've completed the Haze Laboratory as you get access to making the pet house out of mushroom bricks and that's how you can customise them by equipping them with different helmets. But yeah, at this stage, you'll have probably noticed how much you're wasting resources, getting too much loot sometimes and having to go back and forth to dump your inventory. The devs are working on fixes in the future, but for now, the pets are the best system to get more inventory space. So there we go, seven crucial things I think you need to know about Grounded that it doesn't maybe tell you enough of. Hopefully that's been useful. If it has, leave a like, check out the rest of my guides and let me know some crucial tips you think should belong in the next one that I might do. Leave it in the comment section. Until next time, Ratbergs, laters.